Hey everyone, how's it going? I just wanted to talk a little about the MCAT car section. And as a disclaimer, here's my score. I got a 126 on this section and I don't really consider it my best section at all. It's actually my worst of the four and I don't consider doing spectacularly too well in cars. I would say I did decent, but nonetheless, I still want to give advice for those of you who are really struggling in this section because when I took the exam for the very first time, I ended up getting, I think, a 122 or a 123 in cars because um, it was something I personally really struggled in. So to jump up about like three to four points to a 126 is a pretty decent improvement. And I wanted to talk about some of the points that I did in order to make that type of improvement for those of you who were really, really struggling with that section of the exam. I would say with cars, something that I really did that helped improve was to simply practice every day. And a resource that I would recommend using, which is a resource I've been using in all my other videos explaining the science sections, is Jack Weston. It's a really good resource for you to do cars every single day. I'm not gonna break down the passage in this video because I don't think I have the level of expertise as I do in the other sections. However, maybe I should make a video where I invite somebody who has done very well in cars to potentially break a passage down. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see. I know personally a couple of people who have done extremely well in cars and they have their own strategies to give. Based off of what I heard from them, people who've done extremely well in cars they often tend to be very good readers and reading just happens to be a hobby that they like to do. And it makes a lot of sense because in the MCAT, I noticed that on the real exam, cars passages are quite long. So if you tend to read very often, you will tend to comprehend the passages a bit better. It's a skill that can be built up just as any other skill. The thing is that the MCAT cars, what I've noticed is that that section in particular, it tries to test passages on you that you're not used to reading in school. So it's not too surprising that people who tend to read on their spare time, not under school conditions, tend to do better in cars because they're just more accustomed to comprehending difficult material. And it depends on the type of material like the, um, that they like to read. For example, like complicated novels that are written in the 1800s can be quite hard to understand. And there are some passages in cars that are based off of those novels novels. So oftentimes people who like to read older literature tend to do quite better in cars because they're not very easy to understand. Uh, maybe even reading books such as the Bible too can perhaps help in cars. I'm not saying you should read the Bible to do better in cars, but the Bible is not a very easy book to understand and it is an extremely ancient book. That's what I've been hearing from students who have done very well in cars that they often tend to read very often, you know, and the people who I know who have done extremely well in cars, they off, they're, they're often like naturally gifted in reading. But I'm not trying to say that if you don't score high in cars, you're never going to score high at all. It's not true. It's a skill that could be improved upon. And I would argue that when my car score started improving, the scores in all my other sections started to improve as well. And it all goes back to reading the question stem carefully and addressing what the question's really asking and using the keywords to go back into the passage and find the right piece of information. Even though um, I applied that strategy in cars and it worked, I would say it didn't work too well on test day because the passages were a bit longer and I had a bit of a bit more trouble finding the information within cars. It's naturally harder because for me, I see cars more like a sea of words. Rather, in chemphys, you can easily find the information within the passage because oftentimes you just need two numbers and that is it. You just need two numbers, you can pull a formula from the top of your head and you're like, oh yeah, I can do it. In cars, you have to think through a bit more and it's not as straightforward as pulling up a formula, at least the way I see it. You have to jump from one conclusion to another conclusion and then reason from that. This is why I've often heard that people who have taken the LSAT, which is for law school, often tend to do very well in cars because lawyers have to make logical deductions using evidence and then make a claim from it. And then from that claim, they make a conclusion. So I would recommend getting into learning logistical statements, logic statements. Those can be very helpful in cars because remember, cars isn't really so much a English literature test as it is a critical thinking test. However, nonetheless, I did say that the people I've talked to have done very well in cars. They do tend to have quite a fondness for books too. Some of these people are, are, my, are my very own students who have done very well in cars. Yeah, and that's the advice I have to give for cars is to practice it every day because if you don't do cars every day, you're going to forget the strategies that made you successful, you know, in practicing cars every day. And when you get an answer wrong, you review it thoroughly and attempt the answer again as if you were doing the problem for the very first time. 
Cars is the one section that I would strongly advise you getting a study buddy for, in that you can attempt the passage, the same passage that your study buddy attempts. And when your study buddy attempts that passage, the two of you can meet together and compare which answers each of you got right or wrong individually. And if you get an answer that your study buddy gets wrong, that is a chance for you to explain it to them and vice versa. So it creates a very good learning opportunity for you to improve in that section of the exam. But yeah, it boils down to ensuring that you address the question stem correctly and understanding your mistakes, which is why I strongly advocate for reviewing your wrong answers. You need to understand why you got it wrong and why the right answer is right and things that you can do to prevent you from getting the answer wrong the next time. That's really my um, advice when it comes to cars. Potentially find a study buddy if you're really struggling in that section, because I know it's a section that pre-meds have the hardest time improving in. And even I personally had a very tough time improving in the exam. It's a section that can often get pre-meds, but do not be discouraged. It can be done. And that's the advice I really wanted to give on cars for those of you who are really, really struggling in that section, just to complete my four section MCAT series. But anyway, I hope this video helps. For those of you who are struggling in cars and wanting to get the score that I ended up getting. For those of you who have scored higher than me, congrats on beating me. And I hope that y'all can end up achieving very high scores in cars, you know, by following these tips. And I will see if in a subsequent video, I could perhaps invite a guest who did very well in cars and see wh what they have to give as advice. If you all know anybody who's like that, refer them to me. In the meantime, take care. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you later.